It looks like one of the Combat Pack DLC characters has been delayed. Plus, new secrets about Trimmer's gameplay have been revealed. And finally, a surprise twist that nobody saw coming. All that and more in today's video, along with more news about my comic book, so stay tuned. Another day means more Mortal Kombat 1 news. I'm covering it all the time on this channel. So if you want to stay up to date, then make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss any future videos. And without any further ado, let's get started. Starting off with the gameplay reveal for or Trimmer, because I think that's the most interesting by far. Because about a week ago, the creator of Mortal Kombat himself, Ed Boon, revealed that Trimmer would have variations in Mortal Kombat 1. Which is crazy, because he's the first character to play that way. It may have been common in Mortal Kombat X, which is the first time that Trimmer was fully playable. In that game, every character had three variations, but in Mortal Kombat 1, that's not the case. Every character just has one variation, except for Trimmer. Which is already crazy, but on top of that, Trimmer is a cameo character, which means Means he's probably gonna be the most complicated cameo character in the game yet. Except for Shujinko, maybe, because that man has so many different moves to memorize depending on which opponent you're fighting. But even so, Trimmer having variations is pretty cool, and until recently, a lot of people theorized that he could switch these variations in the middle of a match. However, according to recent news, that likely is not the case, as it turns out. Just check out this image on screen. Trimmer, Aftershock, Offense, Metallic, Ranged, and Crystalline, Support. This image image very likely implies that Trimmer has to pick his variation before the match begins. You can't cycle them live during the match. Which may seem like a bummer, however, don't freak out, this may actually be good news. Because for one thing, it makes him more accurate to Mortal Kombat X, where you had to pick your variation in advance before the match started. Nobody could just change their character's variation in the middle of the game, so this feature is actually true to Mortal Kombat X. But the best part is, this image implies that Trimmer has three completely different movesets. If you pick the Aftershock variation, he's more offense-based and likely has more combo extenders and is plus on block. However, if you choose the Metallic variation, then he's more ranged-based. He has projectiles and other ranged attacks of that nature. He's more of a zoner or keep-away character. But then, if you choose Crystalline, he's a support character, and we already saw in the trailer he can reflect projectiles. But since this image confirms that he's a support character, that also implies he could have the armor buff that he gives to your character. Just in case any of you watching and never played Mortal Kombat X, Trimmer's ability to give himself armor is what made him the best character in the entire game. And I'm not exaggerating, I'm not being hyperbolic, pretty much every pro player agrees that Trimmer at the end of Mortal Kombat X is the strongest character. And one of the main reasons why is that armor ability. So now imagine he can give your character armor during gameplay, how sick would that be? If that does turn out to be the case, I'm just hoping that both characters flex on the opponent and get armor, that would be so sick. I want to watch watch Trimmer and my main character flex at the same time. That sounds so cool. What a screenshot that would be. Man, I would make that into my wallpaper, and I'm not joking. Alright, but now here comes the bad news. After buttering you up, I have to let you down a little bit. Because even though Trimmer was shown in every trailer featuring Omni-Man, it turns out they're actually not going to release on the same date. Which I know is a bit misleading. I was caught off too. I always knew that it was a possibility. But even so, I was a bit disappointed. Because once again, every Omni-Man trailer had Trimmer in it too, and as a result, we all assumed that both characters would be playable on the same day, but sadly, that's just not the case. And just in case you don't believe me, here's the screenshot. As you can see, Omni-Man becomes available on November 9th if you have the season pass, and then as for Trimmer, he becomes playable about 10 days later, so not a very big wait, which is good, and I'm happy about that, but at the same time, it's a bit of a shame that both these characters are not going to drop on the same day. But if I was to put myself in the mindset of a game developer, it does make sense to space out all of your characters, because that way when Omni-Man drops, a bunch of players come flooding back to the game just to see how he plays, just to use him online a little bit, but eventually they will get bored and leave the game. But oh look, Trimmer's here now! Ten days later, everyone come back and play the game all over again. From a developer standpoint, it makes sense. From a marketing standpoint, it makes sense, but still a bit of a bummer. At any rate, the good news is Trimmer looks really cool, and the fact that he's three different characters rolled into one has me really excited because I can't wait to test out every variation and pair it with my favorite characters. However, that being said, at the same time, I'm a bit worried because if Trimmer really is this complicated and this versatile, then what if he replaces the other cameo characters because he's just that flexible when it comes to his gameplay? If Trimmer really does have three times the attacks of every cameo character, I can imagine him being everywhere at tournaments and everywhere online, which on the one hand could be great if you're a Trimmer fan, I suppose, but at the same 
same time, I want to see variety in the cameo characters. And if Trimmer really is three different characters who can be used for offense, defense, and support, then Trimmer might be out here taking everybody's jobs away, just stealing all the cameo characters' spotlight. But as you all know, I love making these videos interactive, so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you excited to play Trimmer? How do you feel that he's coming out 10 days after Omni-Man? And are you worried that he's gonna be too good and just dominate Mortal Kombat for the first month that he's out? Like I keep saying in every single video, I truly do read each and every comment, so grab that keyboard and make your voices heard. But now finally, it's time for the last topic, a DLC twist that nobody saw coming, myself included. And that's because it's a double twist. We've been bamboozled twice in a row, or at least that's what seems to be the case. But allow me to explain, because I know that sounds confusing. Many months ago, Amazon was the first website to have details about the Combat Pack DLC. And this likely was a mistake, which is why they took it down, but even so, people grabbed some screenshots, and it said that Johnny Cage was going to be a cameo in Combat Pack 1. And this had some people excited, and other people confused, because Johnny Cage is already in the game. But even so, that's not exactly rare in Mortal Kombat 1. For example, Scorpion and Sub-Zero and Kung Lao are all cameos, despite also being fully playable in the game. However, thankfully, they don't have duplicate moves, right? The cameos and the main playable characters all have entirely different attacks, and as a result, even though you can pair Sub-Zero with Sub-Zero, neither one feels redundant or takes away from the other one. And the same would likely be true for Johnny Cage. The cameo character would play completely different from the main fully playable character on the roster. But then there was a bombshell dropped on the community. As it turns out, we're not getting Johnny Cage as a DLC cameo, instead we're getting Janet Cage, who's technically a brand new character that shows up in the final chapter of story mode. She's Johnny Cage from a different timeline. And in that different timeline, Johnny Cage just happened to be born a woman. And for me personally, I was excited about this news, because not only does it make the DLC less redundant, because Janet Cage is a brand new character, but then on top of that, her attacks would be different as well, because she's technically a new character and therefore can have different attacks than the default Johnny Cage. Everyone in the comments and everybody online had mixed feelings about this reveal, but then here comes the double twist. As it turns out, we may have all been wrong, including me. It looks like Janet Cage is not going to be in Combat Pack 1 after all. Instead, it is going to be Johnny Cage, like we originally assumed. And if you don't believe me, just check out this screenshot from the official WB Games website. According to them, Johnny Cage is going to be the DLC cameo in Combat Pack 1. Or in other words, we all had it right the first time. Amazon's information was correct the first go around. Or is it? I'm not sure, because on the one hand, WB Games support does confirm that Johnny Cage is going to be the DLC cameo. However, at the same time, WB themselves has confirmed that Janet Cage is going to be the character instead. And as a result, I'm not sure which information is correct. I'm going to play it safe for now and just assume that it's going to be Johnny Cage in Combat Pack 1. However, in the background, I'm going to have my fingers crossed and remain hopeful that Janet Cage could be the character instead. And there's one main reason why I feel this way. Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat 1 is nearly identical to how he played in every past Mortal Kombat game. For example, he still has the shadow kick and the nut punch and the flying elbow and a bunch of new moves mixed in, like the parry and the wave dash, all that cool stuff, but for the most part, he's still Johnny Cage. And as a result, I have no clue what Johnny Cage's cameo character could do. Like, what's even left? The projectiles. And maybe that's it. Because keep in mind, Johnny Cage does not have any projectiles in Mortal Kombat 1. That was done on purpose by the developers to make him a bit different and more focused on offense. Which is completely fine, but my point is that that's the only move they can give to the cameo that's gonna be different. For example, let's analyze Kung Lao real quick. In Mortal Kombat 1, Kung Lao does not teleport, nor does he do the ground buzzsaw with his hat. And as a result, his cameo version does have those attacks. It all makes sense. And the same is true for Sub-Zero and even Scorpion, right? But Johnny Cage has all of his iconic moves, so what can you even give to the cameo character? Listen, I'm not gonna be mad if we get Johnny Cage as a cameo DLC, but I'm still kinda hopeful it'll be Janet Cage, because that way she can have more new attacks. But hey, maybe I'm missing something, so let me know in the comments section if there's any more Johnny Cage attacks that I'm forgetting about, because nothing comes to mind. And then while you're down there, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, because that's pretty much it, and I hope you enjoyed another daily dose of Mortal Kombat 1 news. And then finish that combo by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. But now it's time to talk more about my comic, Top Tier. The Indiegogo launches in three days, and I want to talk to you about David. He's the man
main character for issue 1, but unfortunately he's also the weakest. Not for lack of trying though, he's actually training every day and also been in tons of fights. But for whatever reason, his punches don't physically hurt that much. He's got great technique, great fundamentals, but every time he lands a hit, it doesn't do very much. It's almost like the creators of his planet itself made him weak by design. But everything changes after a severe thunderstorm. Some characters get struck by lightning, while others are blessed with a glowing beam of light. All of the stronger characters that got struck by lightning are now weaker, and on the flip side, every character caught in the glowing light has become stronger. And guess what? David was one of those lucky fighters. Now David's punches finally hurt. He starts standing up to bullies and fighting to gain respect amongst his peers. So as you can see, a bunch of awesome stuff is gonna happen in top tier, and don't forget, it launches in three days.